points, but I'll try to go through and, uh, and cover those with you in the next 20 minutes. This is a graph that many of you have seen before. Um, it shows the successful history of the eJets of Embraer. When we launched this program, I think no one had imagined how successful the eJets would have been across the years. 2,200 firm orders on the books. It's the third most successful program in history. We're extremely proud of this uh, in the accumulated orders of the eJets. And if we look at the customers, also a picture we've shown before, but it keeps counting. We have 90 airlines on the eJets, so only the eJets, 90 customers in 60 different countries. Nicely spread around the, around the world. Very pleased, not only flying, but also supported by Naples organization. Uh, amazing what we're achieving here on the eJets globally. I don't want to spend a lot of time in the market outlook. I know you are used to Embraer providing a market outlook at the show. We do share a lot of slides normally. I want to keep it very simple. Uh, we will have a press release before, uh, for you before you leave, which will contain a lot of details. Um, so I'll share quickly the highlights of our market outlook. Um, 10,500 aircraft we expect to deliver in the segments between 2024 and 2043. That's up to 150 seats. Nicely spread around the world, we'll see roughly a third in Asia, a third in America, and a third in the European <coughs> Middle East, and then in Latin America, another thousand units. So nicely spread, up to 150 seats, covering the, the E-175 E-1 and the E-2 family. So more information again in the press release, so feel free to take that away, and that gives you all the details that you may need. I first would like to touch on the 175E1. Um, a few years ago, we were struggling with the 175. There were some pilot shortages. Uh, we've been talking about that for a long time. That's really behind us now. We've given it a nice new livery here for the show. Very proud to call this the business hero. We think this is going to be still a very good aircraft for the years ahead. We have a blended production line in Brazil and we foresee that we will build E1s into any twos together on the same production lines for many years ahead. If you look at the statistics, it is pretty amazing. Since 2019, if you look at the numbers, we've been growing the in-service fleet from 586 units to 740, the growth of 22% since the crisis. We have 1.2 million scheduled flights in 2024 alone, covering 1,500 markets worldwide with a staggering number of 99.3 scheduled reliability and a 99.9 .9 completion rate. A very reliable aircraft. It's the aircraft of choice in the US. Uh, we have hundreds of aircraft connecting cities in the US, but the aircraft also flying uh, elsewhere in the world. So we're very pleased with the performance of the eJet. And to support that going forward, oh, let me first, of course, share this. This is uh, something we announced in February. Um, 90 aircraft from American, uh, American Airlines and 43 options, so 133 uh, positions in total, deliveries from 2025 to 2030. Uh, we're very pleased with this order. This really showed after some deals that we did last year that there's a real pickup uh, of the 175E1 going forward. We see more demand going forward. We have more discussions on the aircraft, uh, but we're very pleased to announce this deal uh, earlier in the year. Um, and we will support the 175E1 many years to come, and we will bring further improvements to the platform. Um, and I would like to show some news here today that we have not shown before of real tangible improvements that the 175E1s will get in the next couple of years. <coughs> so first and foremost, a lot of improvements that we made on the E2, we're now carrying forward also to the E175. The biggest element are the new bins, um, we all know that the E2 has bigger bins. We can fit wheel first, uh, uh, sorry, baggage with wheel first. Um, this allows one bag per passenger, also one for the 175E1 in the future. A big change, so this is coming. Uh, we will deliver this, we will offer it to customers, and once we have the order from the customers coming in, uh, we will share how much time it will take to get this into the market. But this is, this is in work at the moment. Another big development is mood lighting. Uh, for those of you that have flown the E2, you know that there's a beautiful mood lighting on that aircraft. We will introduce the same on the 175E1. Uh, another feature that the customers have been asking for, we're really pleased that that's something we can bring to the market. 
and I think it looks great. This is this doesn't look like an aircraft uh, from many many years ago. It's a very modern appeal, especially with the bigger bins that we're bringing to this aircraft. Um, on the connectivity side, um, we will also improve the <coughs> aircraft. We will offer Geo and Leo uh, constellation connectivity through KU and KA band. Uh, we'll have a new generation lightweight uh, electronic antenna on the 175 we one So also there we're trying to further improve this product. And a new seat option. We will bring Recaro also to the E1. We've announced we did it before on the E2 as a BFE. We're now offering it as supplier furnished equipment on the E1 going forward. So another big development uh, on the 175 E1. Two new features on the avionics side. So also on the avionics side, we keep investing into the program. Um, we see the future ahead. Enhanced data transfer solutions um, that will offer uh, the digital transfer, automatic uh, retrieval of flight data, but also distribution of database and software. And we will bring a next generation weather radar, detection and alert of weather, detection and alert of turbulence, predictive wind shear, and a 3D um, volumetric um, scanning. So two new features that we're bringing to the 175 v Very proud to announce it here today. Moving to the E2. The E2, um, Francisco mentioned it already, it's an aircraft that gives you fuel burn reduction today. It's out there, you can see it, you can feel it, customers are seeing it. 25% fuel reduction compared to the previous family. An amazing platform not just a re-engine, but a completely revamped aircraft compared to the E-Jets E1. Very proud of this aircraft. It's the best complement to the large and narrow bodies. So we believe the E2 and the A320 or the 737s, they're an ideal combination to offer a perfect suite of uh, different capacities um, at almost similar sheet cost as the bigger narrow bodies. And airlines are starting to see this. And that's shown by the following picture. We have 17 operators in 17 different countries across five continents at the moment on the E2. An amazing uh, achievement. A lot of airlines were added over the last couple of years post-crisis. And we believe this is going to be encountering in the next period ahead of us. And also on the E2, there's a couple of very nice improvements that I would like to show with you today. Uh, we're very proud that we keep investing on the E2. We're making it better and better. And we believe we can bring more sustainability benefits to the market. We can bring more range. And there's a couple of features that I would like to share with you here today on the E2. First of all, um, we are bringing another 2.5% fuel burn improvement on the 190 and the 195E2. That's partly due to taking less bleed of the engines, so it's more efficient for the aircraft. It's also efficiency that's built in on the aircraft that we've been delivering since the beginning but we have been a little bit too conservative on our numbers to the customers. So we're now able to really show, commit, and guarantee this additional 2.5%. We have had our customers saying, you said there was a 17% fuel and gap between the 190E1 and the 190 e 2 They said, that's wrong, you're too conservative, it's actually well over 20. That's what we're correcting here. So a real improvement of fuel work on the E2. We're very pleased to show this. And this has a value of around 1 million per aircraft uh, on an NPV basis, just these two and a half percent. So big impact for the, for the customers here. And if you compare it to the A220, we used to have a roughly 10% gap from one to the other. That is of course an increase of 12 and a half. So a meaningful difference to what we've shown before. And it's gonna be available at the fourth quarter of next year, the full 2.5%. On the engine, um, we're bringing a new optimized climb thrust. We are already showing a 10% better take time on wing on the E2 versus the A220. We will bring that to 20% in total. So we will have less wear and tear on the engine. Uh, the operators will have the capability to have uh, an optimized climb thrust, which, which is just less severe for the engine. Um, this is something we've been working on with Pred and Whitney, available already first quarter next year. So very important for airlines. Um, giving another uh, half a million benefit per aircraft on the, on the maintenance cost. <clears throat> Something else we're doing, and this is also very big, we've had, uh, we've had we reduced some gaps on the cabin. Uh, just a couple of examples that we're showing here. 
um, there's a setback in the in the in the cabin that we had to uh, take into account when we define our layouts. Um, we have reduced that a little bit in the front. We have to reduce that a little bit in the back. And that's allowing us on most configurations to fit in another row of four seats on this aircraft. And this delivers roughly a four and a half million MPV value for customers compared to what we're doing today. So whether you have a single economy class or whether you have a combination with business class and premium economy, uh, with this additional space that we're now uh, able to bring back to the customers, we can bring more seats um, in the same configurations. And we're actually seeing airlines thinking about adding some more seats also on existing configurations. Available from 2026. So if you put it all together, so both the fuel burn reduction and the maintenance cost on the engine, and you bring in those additional seats, we're increasing the gap on a per trip level compared um, to an A to 20, from 8% to 10%, and on the cost per seat, we're going from plus one to minus 4% if you compare those two aircraft with each other. So a meaningful impact on the E2 with those improvements that we're finally bringing to the market today. But there's more, there's one feature that I would like to share here today, which is on the E2 very soon. That's not on any other aircraft out there today. Uh, it's an amazing feature designed by our engineering team. I'm the Luis Carlos Afonso, who's, with, who's here with us today. Um, and it's called the E2TS. And the E2TS is the Ember Enhanced Takeoff System. Uh, what it does, it's the first automated takeoff system in commercial aviation. Um, it gives an optimum profile by automating the takeoff of this aircraft. So what you clearly see, the conventional takeoff takes more takeoff distance than the E2TS takeoff distance that we can offer, staying clear of obstacles earlier, and what this eventually does is either gives you more fuel at takeoff, which gives you more range, or it can give you more payload to take away from the airport. A meaningful impact, just to give you uh, a little bit of a sense what this could mean. Of course, on shorter restricted airfields, we're talking about Santos Dumont, uh, we're talking about Florence, and we're talking about London City. London City, this E2TS will offer 350 miles additional range. And you see, even from a very short one rate, like London, uh, like London City, you'll see that the 195 has an amazing range well into Africa and well into Greece, uh, sorry, Turkey. Right, so an amazing performance, it's the first time ever we bring that to the market. Um, another change we're bringing to the E2 is an increase of 500 kilograms of max takeoff weight. Now you may say 500 kilograms, that's not a lot, it goes from 62 tons to 62.5. But because the aircraft is so fuel efficient, those 500 kilograms extra fuel actually gives you quite some more range. And the 195 E2 was, already, was always at around 2,600 miles, we're now increasing the range of that aircraft to 3,000 miles, which is a difference which is going to be very helpful in some of the regions of the world. Um, and the 190 E2, we're not raising the max takeoff weight as we speak because already we are very close to the 3,000 mile range. But because of the 2.5% fuel burn improvement, we still add another 100 nautical miles to the range of this aircraft. So very pleased to see that we can improve our marketing story on the E2 and allow our customers to fly just that little bit of extra range with the E2 going forward. I mentioned Recaro on the E1. We had Recaro already for some customers as a buyer furnished equipment uh, on the E2. We're now very pleased to announce that as of next year, we will also be able as a supplier furnished equipment to bring the Recaro seat on board of our aircraft. So we already have the Safran seat and we will now add the Recaro seat as a second choice um, to the E2. And what we announced a few months ago, and we're very proud to show that again, we announced 20 um, E2 aircraft for Mexicana. I'm very pleased to have General <coughs> CEO of Mexicana here in person. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, we're awesome. extremely pleased to, uh, to have these aircraft come into Mexico and operate for your airline. Uh, and I'm very happy that we can announce that again. So we had the 90 E-Jets on the E1 and we have the 20 E2 so far, which created a one and a half uh, book to build already halfway through the year for Embraer. So uh, very positive results. Um, but what I also mentioned is that we have 
Well, Francisco earlier mentioned 200 aircraft. It's actually closer to 300 aircraft that we have in negotiations at the moment with various airlines. As I said at the start of my presentation, I've never seen so much traction in the market as we see today. Um, we will announce deals when they're done. We're really progressing on some of those deals. We have several airlines that have already done selected the E2. Um, I would love to share more today, but we need a little bit more time, so stay tuned on that. But I'm pretty confident that Embraer will um, announce more E2 customers in the remainder of this year. And for those of you that have been outside, there's a new baby uh, from us, uh, Francisco already mentioned. We brought our 190 freighter <coughs> here today. Um, it's a great achievement. It looks so simple to put a small hole in an aircraft and to put a door in, but I can show you one thing, it's an amazing feat to do that. Uh, and I think we, uh, we, we all know that as a team, right? Thousands and thousands of engineering hours go into changing an aircraft, cutting the hole, strengthening the door, strengthening the floor, putting the cargo barriers in, lighting, um, fuel suppression systems, uh, cargo loading systems. It's here today, I would recommend you to take a look at the aircraft. Um, and there's one thing that I would like to announce here today, which we're really, really proud of because it's very fresh. Um, but we, no, not back. Yes, that's the right one. It's certified in Brazil. So ANAC, in only a few days ago, has certified the 190 freighter. Uh, so we're very proud that we have now have all the test flights behind us. The, the, the project has been completed. Uh, this is an aircraft owned by Regional One, which is a lessor. We also have Nordic Aviation Capital, which is another lessor on the program. They will bring the first aircraft to be converted. And we're working very hard in the market with several customers uh, for the first introduction. But of course, it's only one aircraft today. Uh, we will now start the line. We will build uh, more freighters going forward. I'm uh, very proud to add this baby to the family. Uh, not only because it's a, it's a freighter, but also strategically for Embraer, we believe this allows a great afterlife for the, for the asset, which is good for our service department to, to work longer on the support of the aircraft, but also to make space for our new E2s to bring more fuel burn improvements to our customers. The last couple of minutes I would just spend on energy. We've been updating the market now for several years on the lower end of the market. Uh, the reason why we launched Energy, and I've said that a couple of times before, but I want to repeat that here, is we wanted, for three reasons, to take a look at the Energy family. The first one was, we wanted to show that we're actively looking at the segment. We are looking at the technologies, and we're very interested to see how we can contribute to a more sustainable future. Secondly, we wanted to show also to the market and our uh, suppliers that we want to talk about this subject and we want to make sure to understand where the market is going on this and where suppliers can help us bring product to the market. But thirdly, and last but not least, is we wanted to talk to customers to understand is there a market here? What are the, what are the customers looking for? Is there a market for smaller aircraft? Again, completely green. So we're working at, in advisory group panels with a lot of airlines, with, with a lot of consultants, with a lot of uh, engine manufacturers, MRO providers, um, spending a lot of time on the Energia family. And what we have concluded in the last advisory board, it's just one message I want to show here, is that we've been looking at really small aircraft initially. Um, the market keeps telling us that they would like a slightly bigger aircraft, so we're now looking in up to 50-seater concepts. We're having three models that we see as different um, potential missions, um, and the mission defines the architecture, right, uh, Luis Carlos? So that's what we like to say. Um, the hybrid electric version, which has the earliest tech readiness later than 2030, but that could be done rather soon. A 600 mile range and a 25% reduction in CO2. If you move to a fuel cell option with hydrogen, we will have to look further out in the future, possibly earliest 2035, a similar range. But of course, that would be 100% CO2 neutral. Um, or a combination of <coughs> hydrogen and SAF, which will give you more range. What that concept does is you fly the mission on hydrogen and you will use sustainable aviation fuel as uh, reserve fuel uh, that you may need for your operation. If you're more range, you can get up to 900 miles. Um, and of course, as long as you keep flying on hydrogen, you're looking at 100%. Uh, fuel burn reduction 
on that concept. So we'll keep working on this. Uh, I want to thank all the customers and all the partners that are on the advisory board with us. Uh, we keep working it and um, it is part, and this is a slide I want to present shortly because Francisco already showed it earlier. Uh, but from a commercial perspective, I repeat the message, the best way to reduce CO2 is to not burn the fuel in the first place. So we see 25% reduction of fuel on the E2. We really recommend customers to replace their existing equipment by much more efficient E2s that we have available today. We see new products going forward. First, the E2 at 100% SAF. So we're working on that before the end of this decade. Um, we are working on new concepts in the next couple of years. And then in the future, we believe we could do an E2 or an E2 size aircraft, probably on hydrogen or a dual fuel solution. And I guess that was my last slide. <laughs>